Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wassalamu ala rasulillahi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa man ihtada bi huda. Amma ba'd, the 42nd chapter of the book Ash-Shama'il al-Muhammadiyya contains one authentic hadith and it's about offering the voluntary prayers in the house rather elsewhere and Abdullah ibn Sa'd, may Allah be pleased with him, he says, I asked the Prophet of Allah alayhi salatu wassalam about performing the voluntary prayers in my home or performing it in the masjid. So the Prophet ﷺ said, you may notice how near my home is to the masjid. Of course, we know that the masjid, the Prophet's houses are adjacent and surrounding the masjid. So it's only the wall that separates the masjid from his home. So the Prophet said, والسلام, you may notice how near my home is to the masjid. I prefer praying at home over praying in the masjid, except in the case of the prescribed prayers, the fard prayers. And this is a well-known fact in Islam. The Prophet said, والسلام, the best of a person's prayer are in his home except for the fard prayer. So those prayers that are mandated to pr be prayed in congregation, the best is to be prayed in congregation, such as fard prayer in the masjid, such as Eid in the musalla, such as praying for rain, for uh, sun eclipse or the moon eclipse, etc. But any other than that, you pray at home. What about taraweeh? No, taraweeh is highly recommended to be prayed in the masjid because this is how the Prophet prescribed it alayhi salatu wasalam, and he recommended it to be offered there. So why would praying voluntary prayers home would be more rewarding than praying it in the masjid. For example, if I go for Umrah, I know that praying one prayer in the masjid of Al-Haram is equivalent, is equivalent or better than a hundred thousand units elsewhere or prayers that is elsewhere. So should I pray the Sunnah or voluntary prayers in the Masjid Al-Haram in Mecca or in Medina where it's 1,000 times better elsewhere? Or should I pray them in my hotel room? The answer is pray them in your hotel room. But Shaykh, the reward, this is what the Prophet said Your prayer in your home is better than your prayer in the Masjid. The following chapter deals with the fasting of the Prophet and the fasting of the Prophet contains a number of hadith about 16 Abdullah ibn, Shafiq, uh, Abdullah ibn Shaqiq may Allah have mercy on his uh, uh, soul said one of the tabi'een I asked Mother Aisha may Allah be pleased with her about the fasting of the Prophet she said he used to fast until he uh, until we would say he has fasted and he used to break fast until we would say he had broken fast meaning whenever we wanted to see him fasting he was fasting as if he doesn't break his fast and sometimes he would not fast as if we say to ourselves he never fasts and this is regarding voluntary fasting and she also said that the Prophet of Allah did not fast for a whole month, that is for voluntary fasting, after arriving in Medina with the exception of Ramadan. 
So what are the months that are highly recommended to fast? The month of Shaban and the month of Muharram. Yet she says the Prophet almost never completed any of these months other than the month of Ramadan, which is prescribed in a fart. Anas ibn Malik, may Allah be pleased with him, was asked about the fasting of the Prophet So he said he used to fast during the month until we would assume that he did not intend to break fast during it. And he used to break fast until we would assume that he did not intend to fast during any of it. You would not wish to assume that he was performing the prayers during the night unless you saw him performing the night prayers, nor that he was sleeping unless you saw him sleeping. What does this mean? It's not a riddle. It's simply stating to you that the Prophet was balanced. He used to pray until you thought that he never slept. And he used to sleep until you thought that he never prayed. He used to fast until you thought that he would never break his fast. And he used to eat and not fast until you thought that he never fasted. The same thing happened when three of the companions came and asked about how the Prophet's routine was because they wanted to follow suit. So when they heard about his routine, they sort of thought that it was, this is too little. So one of them said, I will pray the whole night without sleeping. The other one said, I will fast every single day without breaking my fast, without skipping a day. The third one said, I'll never marry women. When the Prophet heard this, he was outraged. And he came to the pulpit and he said, why do I hear people say such things? Verily, I eat and fast, I pray and sleep, and I marry women. Whoever chooses any other than my way, he's not from me. So this balance is very highly required in our times if we want to be with the Prophet ﷺ on the day of judgment. هذا والله أعلم بالنسبة العلم إليه أسلم صلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين. صلى الله على محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم صلى الله على محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم آه صلى الله عليه وسلم